Hello. In this video, I'm going to show you the basics of using IBM Bluemix open platform for developing web and mobile applications. In this tutorial, I'll focus on how you can get started and quickly build a simple iOS mobile app. You will build a classic Hello World example app. I'll cover the basics of getting a Bluemix account, which you can see here we're getting started right now, as well as setting up your development environment using Xcode and creating the backend Node.js application that the Hello World mobile app will connect to. Bluemix offers a free trial account. You can go to bluemix.net to access the Bluemix website. Select the sign up button on the top right and to create an account, enter your email address and you want to sign in with for Bluemix and you'll receive an email notification. Uh, once you get that, within a few minutes you can check your email and click on the link and to activate your account and sign in using the password you entered. The Bluemix dashboard is where you create your and run your apps. Bluemix has created an organization where you and others you invite can collaborate with to build apps. The dashboard is where you can create new apps and identify services that the application will use. The catalog is where you can choose different types of runtimes and services that you can add to your application. At the top, you can see the starter boilerplates, which includes a runtime languages and a set of pre-configured services that make it easier and faster to quickly create the infrastructure to run an app. Boilerplate scripts are provided from a variety of app types like web apps, Internet of Things, and mobile and iOS. Runtimes include Java, Liberty, Node, Python, and many others. The catalog includes IBM and third-party services. You can quickly find which services to use by filtering the services by IBM, third-party, or choosing, if you want, community-supported IBM-supported applications, as well as services which are experimental. You can also search by typing in the services name at the top. The catalog automatically filters items based on what type. Take a minute to check out the great services we have from IBM and our partner sites. These include the key services you need to quickly build your app, letting you focus on coding the core competency of your app. We'll be using step-by-step -step directions that are available in the Bluemix documentation. The documentation can be accessed up at the top. The documentation is organized by what type of app you want to build, select mobile apps, and you can further choose what type of mobile app you want to make, native mobile apps like iOS 8, Android, or hybrid, or others. As you select the Bluemix documentation framework, automatically trims out the documentation to only show you what's relevant for what you have selected. These are the steps we will take to build our iOS mobile app. Let's first create the iOS 8 mobile app backend, which will store our Hello World message that we will retrieve from the iOS mobile app. Select Create App Mobile iOS 8. This will automatically use the Mobile First Services Starter, which includes a Node.js runtime and SDK to code your business logic. In our case, it will serve the Hello World message. Another service is the Advanced Mobile Access Service, which includes services like authentication, security to ensure only authorized clients connect to your backend services, and monitoring services which show you who is using your app. It also includes some other services that we won't be using in this tutorial, like the Cloud and Database to store data, and the Push Service to push notifications to mobile phones. We enter the name of our application. This name must be unique. It will be what is used to create the URL for our Node.js application that we will call from our iOS mobile app. Bluemix is now automatically provisioning the resources required to run the Node.js runtime and advanced mobile access services, often called a mobile backend. While that is happening, we can begin to configure the unique bundle ID and version that our mobile app will use to call the mobile backend we just created. Jot this down because you will need it later when creating the mobile iOS app. We also need to copy the required SDK dependencies we will need for the mobile iOS app. You can copy all of them just or just the ones you need. For Hello World and monitoring, you only need the pod IMF core. We now are done configuring the mobile backend on Bluemix. All right, I'm going to move over to my local Mac client where I have already installed Xcode and I'm going to create a new folder called Carlos Hello World Mobile. This will be the folder where I create my Xcode project. 
Xcode is the integrated development environment for building iOS mobile iPad and Apple applications. We want to make sure that we've installed the required prerequisites, so we're going to open up a terminal window to see if we've installed CocoaPods. To check if we've installed CocoaPods, we type gem which CocoaPods. If you haven't installed CocoaPods yet, you may also want to type pod setup. Let's create a new project. In Xcode, say file new project. We're going to create an iOS application with a single view application that will display our Hello World. You'll want to use the same organization identifier that you used earlier when you created your app on Bluemix, com.ibm CMF Hello Mobile. We'll be developing this application using Swift, so be sure to check that. If Xcode prepends your app name or product name to your bundle identifier, like you see here grayed out, you can fix that by going into the info.plist file and modifying the bundle identifier to the value you provided when you created your mobile backend on Bluemix. We will now add the Mobile Cloud Services SDK to the iOS mobile app that we're creating it. We're going to be using CocoaPods to install this. We need to first create the pod file suggested in the documentation. So we're going to say file new iOS other and then pick an empty file and then name it pod file. And inside of here we will enter the SDK dependencies that we want to use for our app. We can get the list of the SDK dependencies from the documentation. These SDKs will allow you to use the mobile cloud services on Bluemix like monitoring, security, authentication, and push. You'll want to copy and paste this into your pod file using the copy and paste icon. Uh, so once we have that, we want to go to the command line where we created the pod file, and we want to type the command to pod install. This will download and install all the necessary SDK dependencies for using Bluemix mobile backend. These SDKs will allow you to use the services like monitoring, security, authentication, and push, and other services, for example, authentication if you wanted to use Facebook. The most important SDK is the IMF core. This includes the bare minimum required libraries to use the mobile cloud services. After pod setup completes, you want to close your Xcode project and now open the new workspace that has been created for you in the same folder as CocoaPods. You'll notice when you reopen your workspace, you will see a new Bluemix and Mobile First SDK dependencies have been added to your project. Let's go back and review what we have done so far. We created and activated our Bluemix account. We created an iOS mobile app on Bluemix, which provides us our mobile backend services, including the Node.js runtime, which will have our business logic and hello world message. We set up our client side development environment by installing Xcode from Apple Store. We also installed CocoaPods so that we can install the necessary SDK dependencies. Once we installed CocoaPods by typing pod setup, we then identified the SDK libraries and dependencies that we would use, including the minimum IMF core. We created the pod file and then did pod install, and then we opened up our workspace. The next step is to create a bridging header. The bridging header file is what allows us to call Objective-C code from within our Swift application. In order to begin utilizing the SDK, we need to also initialize our SDK. So let's go through the steps to create. So let's go ahead and create our new bridging header file. We say file, new, file, and Xcode, and under iOS, we pick the option for source. Under source, you'll see an option there, which is the header file. The header file that we're adding, we want to make sure that we um, it ends with bridging-header as a name, and we want to put it in our project. This file will allow us to call Objective-C 
classes inside of our IMF, our mobile first SDK. We replace the default entries that are provided with the ones that were provided in the documentation. We copy and paste those in. Those include the ones that we will need to call the necessary libraries inside of the mobile IMF SDK. We now want to update our build settings so that Xcode will find our Objective-C bridging header file. We open up Xcode and we navigate to our info.plist or we can just uh, select our project at the top level and then set the value to the path for our bridge header. If you scroll all the way to the bottom, you'll see the option Swift Compiler Code Generation Objective-C Bridge Header. Just copy and paste the path to your bridge header file in there. So now we can initialize our IMF client inside of our app. Go into Xcode and open up the app delegate class that was automatically created in Xcode when you created the mobile app. We add the initialize our IMF client with our mobile backend in Bluemix. We include the route and the ID to our app. We can find that by going to the Node.js mobile backend, selecting the advanced mobile access, which takes us to the client registration page. You can copy those values into your app delegate class. The route is the URL to your app, and the unique ID is the unique ID provided as part of the initialization. So let's go in and show you where you can find that. If you click on advanced mobile access, under that you'll see what your route ID is and where your UID is, and you can actually copy that right out of here and paste that into the code earlier. So let's see how you can also navigate to your Node.js web app using the route URL. From the dashboard, at the very top, underneath the name of your app, you can see a link to the route. This actually invokes the URL to your app in a browser and opens up the default message of the Node.js app, which says, hello. We'll want to display that message in a text field on our storyboard. So the storyboard is where you make your user interface. So we add our text field, and then we hold control down as we drag the text field to the, our view controller and select show. We do this a second time, again, clicking on it, holding control down, and then dragging it to the view controller yellow button at the top there and then also say delegate. This makes it so that you can tie your text field to your code, your view control code. And we're going to create a parameter here, which is our Bluemix Node.js response, which is where we will store the value of the hello message that we're going to retrieve by doing a get request on our Node.js application. After wiring our text label to the IB outlet variable, that we named Bluemix Node.js response. We also add some simple code to call the Bluemix mobile backend using an HTTP GET. We insert this code into the view did load method, which gets called when this view is loaded. This includes the URL route to our Bluemix mobile backend. If we check, we check if there's an error, and if there was, we display the error. Otherwise, we put the response in the Bluemix mobile backend into the Bluemix Node.js response variable. Remember to replace this URL with your route to your URL for your back end. We can now go ahead and run this app. Inside of Xcode, press the play button to run the app inside of an Xcode simulator. This will launch the app and it will call our mobile back end. By using the advanced mobile access, we were able to now track and control which clients are accessing our backend. We can also collect logs from our mobile app. In this next part of the tutorial, I'll show you how to enable this by adding the IMF SDK API calls into your mobile app. This code includes the code for IMF logger to invoke and capture logs for your mobile app. By simply pasting those in, you're now able to capture any 
app crashes on your app. We've also added the IMF Analytics Shared Instance Lifecycle Events, which captures events with your apps in terms of apps connecting to your Mac end. So now, what, now we, we've added that code, we can now go into the Advanced Mobile Access and we can now look under monitoring and we can now see that we have connected our device to the mobile back end. This allows you to keep track of which devices have been allowed access and are connecting, how many application views you've had for this application, and you can also filter these based on months, models, as well as the different type of iOS apps. And if you have, if you've also done authentication, you could also measure users. In this case, we're measuring also network requests as well. So you can get quite a bit of information simply by using the IMF client as well as active devices, as you can see here. And then finally, you can also see log files. Uh, so you can actually collect log files that you send up. I hope this uh, tutorial has been helpful, and thanks for watching.